we're going to start by defining two words, or three words actually. Uh, the first word is complementary angles, and what that means is that you have two angles that add up to 90 degrees. The next word is supplementary angles. Now what that means is that you have two angles that add up to 180 degrees. The next word you need to know is what's called an adjacent angle. Now those are two angles that share a common side or a common ray. So angle five and six, angle five and angle six would be an example of adjacent angles. And then um, angle seven and angle eight, that would be an example of non-adjacent angles, where they do not share a side. By right, example one in the figure, you name a pair of complementary angles, a pair of supplementary angles, and a pair of adjacent angles. All right, so for this example, uh, let's see what we have. We need a pair of complementary angles. So that means that they have to add up to 90 degrees. So um, looking at these numbers, these measurements, uh, the two that are going to add up to 90 are going to be this angle here, the 37 degrees, and the 53 degrees. Those would add up to be 90. Um, however, on this one, I can't call that angle A because I don't know which angle you're talking about. So we have to use the three letters on this one. I would have to say complementary, that would be angle, uh, we could say BAC. And we would have this angle here. Now this one I can, since it's by itself, there's not any other angles with this vertex S. If you remember from the other lesson, I can call this one angle S. Okay, so I'd have angle BAC and angle S. Those are two complementary angles. Now for the, uh, Supplementary, those are the ones that have to add up to 90, or excuse me, 180 degrees, 180 degrees. So that's going to be this angle here, this 127 degree and the 53. So again, I can't call this angle A, so I have to call it angle, let's call it angle C, A, D. And we would have angle S. Now remember on this one, I can't use the three points, they do have to be capitalized. So we can call it like angle RST. That'll work just to kind of be, give it a little different notation. It means the same thing. Okay, and then for the adjacent angles, now those are the two that have a common side. All right, so that's going to be these two. All right, so then we would call this, let's go angle BAC, and we would have angle CAD or DAC, either one. Same thing. Okay. So here's my complementary, my supplementary, and my adjacent angles. All right, example two, uh, part A says angle one is a complement of angle two, and the measure of angle one is 62 degrees. We want to find the measure of angle two. Um, and example two B says angle three is a supplement of angle four, and the measure of angle four is 47, and they want us to find the measure of angle three. All right, so for this first one, um, Angle one is a complement of angle two. That means that they both, they're complementary angles, so their sum has to be 90 degrees. So that tells me if the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to equal 90 degrees. All right. So then um, if angle one is 62 degrees, I substitute that in. That tells me 62 plus something has to equal 90. So to find out what that is, I have to subtract um, 90 minus 62, and that tells me that the measure of angle 2 is going to be 28 degrees. Okay. Now for the second example, angle 3 is a supplement of angle 4. That means the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 has to equal 180 degrees. Okay. Same idea. Um, so the measure of angle 4 is 47, so that tells you the measure of angle 3, whatever that is, plus 47 has to give you 180. Okay. So if I subtract 47, if I use this as an equation notation, this would go to 0. So the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 minus 47, which is going to give you 133 degrees. Okay, example three, when viewed from the side, the frame of a ball return net forms a pair of supplementary angles with the ground. 
find the measure of angle BCE and the measure of angle ECD. Okay, so for this problem, we have this um, linear pair here. So that means that these two angles here have to be supplementary, which means uh, in order for me to solve this, I have to come up with an equation. My equation is going to be 4x plus 8 plus x plus 2 is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. To solve this, I have to do some algebra. I have to combine like terms. So 4x plus x gives me 5x. 8 plus 2 would give me plus 10. Okay. Then I subtract 10 from both sides. It tells me that 5x is equal to 170. Divide by 5, I get that x is 30. But again, we're not done because we want the actual angles. We don't just want x. So that means I have to substitute into these angles. So I have measure of angle BCE. The expression they gave us is the 4x plus 8. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to substitute 4 times 34 plus 8. Okay, and that's going to be 144 degrees. And then I also have to find ECD. So the measure of angle ECD is going to be um, 34 plus 2, which happens to be 36. So the measure of angle ECD is 36 degrees. And remember that we said they were supplementary. So a good way to check is to see if these two do add up to 180 because they're supposed to. If you do add them, you do get 180, so chances are you did get right. For a linear pair, you have two angles that share a side, and then the, the two non-common sides are opposite rays, like you see up here. Okay. This would be an example of a linear pair. Now, also with the linear pair, you need to remember that the two angles are supplementary. Next we have what's called vertical angles, and that happens when you have two lines that cross each other, okay, that forms uh, four angles, and so the opposite angles, the ones on top, like four and five, those would be vertical angles, and then you would have three and six, those would be opposite angles, they're, excuse me, they would be vertical angles. Example four, identify all linear pairs at all vertical angles in the figure. Okay, so for this one, we're just naming some angles. Uh, we've got to do linear pairs. Remember that that's two angles that form a line. Okay, so a linear pair, opposite rays um, to be exact, but that opposite rays is a straight line. So the first one that I see is I see this line right here. And so I have a pair right here, angle one and angle four. That would be an example of a linear pair. Okay. It has to be two angles that when you put them together, they form a line. Um, looking at it going this way, I have one and two, but that actually one, two, and three would make a straight line, but I just need a pair, so I only have to have two. Um, the other way I could go would be this way. That would be two, three, and five. That's more than two. Um, so the other linear pair looks like it's going to be angle four, would be a linear pair with angle 5. And I believe that's the only linear pair that I see. Now we need the vertical angles. Okay, and vertical angles, if you remember, those are the ones that are formed when you have two lines that intersect. So here's a line here, and there's a line going this way. Okay. So the vertical angles would be 1 and 5. Because I have this line that crosses this line. So 1 and 5 would be a pair of vertical angles. I don't see any other angles that cross where I have opposite angles like I do here. 4 would be opposite if I would have, or would be vertical to this angle here. But they didn't give me a name for that, so I can't name that. If I kind of ignored 2 and 3, if 2 and 3 were not there, 
then I could say 4 would be vertical to this angle up here. All right, example 5, two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is five, is 5 times the measure of the other angle. Find the measure of each angle. Okay, for this one, it, it's best to draw a picture just so you can get familiar with it. Once you get the hang of it, you don't necessarily need to draw a picture. Um, two angles form a linear pair. So that means you have a pair of opposite rays and there's a line, that, or a ray, excuse me, that goes through it somewhere. Okay, and then it says the measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. So you let the other angle be some variable. You can use anything you want, x, y, z, doesn't matter. Uh, let's just use x because that's what we're used to. Okay, so the other angle, or this angle, is five times the measure of the other angle that we let be x. So um, one measure of the angle is five times this the other one. So that would be five x here. Okay, and then find the measure of each angle. Well, since it's a linear pair, I know that I can take five x plus x, and that has to equal 180 degrees. Definition of a linear pair. Now, so I combine like terms, it tells me 6x is equal to 180. I divide by 6, it tells me that x is 30 degrees. Okay, so this side over here is 30. The 5x side, that's going to be 5 times 30, which is 150. Okay, so each angle, you have a 30 degree angle. And you have a 150 degree angle. All right, for this last part, um, just to kind of how to interpret the diagram, there's some things you can you can conclude. You can, um, I guess you could say, you can assume from a picture, and there's some things you can't. 